Hi there, I'm Amy, and I'm 33 years old. Not long ago, I went through something really tough. I lost my dad to cancer. Ever since I was little, my dad was my biggest supporter and my best friend. He was always there to teach me important things about life, and our connection was really special. When he passed away, it felt like a huge part of my world just disappeared. This was a really hard time for me, and it was something that my husband at the time, James, didn't quite seem to get. James and I first met through a friend and quickly hit it off on a blind date. We shared similar interests and a sense of humor, which led us to start dating. After about six years, we decided to get married. We dreamed of having children, but wanted to ensure financial stability first. Our first major accomplishment together was buying a small, cozy house with three bedrooms, a living room, a kitchen, a dining room, and three bathrooms. It was perfect for us and occasional guests. I take great pride in this achievement, as we financed it all by ourselves. One day, my life took a sudden turn when my mom called in a panic to inform me that my dad had collapsed and was rushed to the hospital. I was in complete shock and rushed to be by his side. We spent hours in the hospital as doctors conducted numerous tests. He was admitted, and with each passing hour, I sensed that something terrible was happening. After five days, we received the devastating news that he had aggressive pancreatic cancer. This news shattered my world. During the following four months, as my dad remained in the hospital, I frequently visited him. James, however, was not supportive of this. He complained about my constant absence, unable to grasp the gravity of my situation. When I tried to explain my need to be with my dad, James suggested that my presence wasn't helping and that I should give him space. This led to a strain in our relationship, as I struggled to balance my family crisis with James's lack of understanding and empathy. I remember James telling me how much he missed our time together, saying, I want you home more. We never spend any time together anymore. I miss us. And he was right. I did miss us, too. I assured him that as soon as I heard that Dad's condition was stable, I'd start taking breaks between my visits. It took another four weeks before I got the news that Dad's condition had stabilized. He was going to be okay for a bit, so I started visiting him every other day. James wasn't thrilled, but I felt he needed to understand. One day at work, my mom called and my heart skipped a beat. Bracing myself, I answered, Hi, Mom. Is everything okay? Her voice was heavy as she said, No, not really. I just visited your dad and there's bad news. My heart sank. The doctors say your dad has about one more month. I was stunned, not knowing how to process this. Mom added that dad was still his cheerful self, joking and smiling. We agreed to face this together, and she urged me to come to the hospital as dad had something special to ask me. The rest of the workday was a blur. My boss noticed my distress and kindly let me leave early, for which I was grateful. As I drove to the hospital, tears filled my eyes. The reality of my dad's condition hit me hard. When I reached the hospital parking lot, I sat in my car, crying. I knew dad wouldn't want to see me upset, but I couldn't help it. Gathering myself, I wiped my tears. I had to be strong for him, for us. With a deep breath, I stepped out of the car, ready to face whatever dad wanted to ask me. Before heading to the hospital, I allowed myself some time to process my emotions. Arriving at the familiar corridors leading to Dad's room, Mom greeted me with a warm, comforting hug. We shared a moment of silent understanding before I entered Dad's room. Dad, despite looking frail and thinner than before, lit up with joy at my arrival. We exchanged playful banter, his humor intact despite the circumstances. He playfully chided me for not visiting sooner and we laughed together. Our conversation turned serious when Dad brought up his recent doctor's visit. He regretfully shared the prognosis, wishing he had been the one to tell me about his limited time left. I tried to stay composed, focusing on the love and humor that had always defined our relationship. Dad then expressed his wish to spend his remaining days with us. He wanted to move into our home, to be surrounded by family. I was moved by his request, but knew I needed to discuss it with James, my partner. After a few hours filled with laughter and cherished moments with mom and dad, I left the hospital feeling a mix of sorrow and joy. It was a strange blend of emotions difficult to comprehend. Returning home around 8 p.m., I found James anxiously pacing. His worry turned to frustration upon seeing me. I apologized, explaining the situation and the emotional complexity of the evening. The conversation shifted towards dad's request and the decision we had to make together. 
After receiving a distressing call about my father's health, I made another visit to the hospital. Dad was there, his time sadly limited to just a couple more months. This news hit me hard, and I shared it with James when I returned home. James initially reacted with frustration over my absence, not knowing the gravity of the situation. After I explained, his tone softened, and he apologized for his earlier worry and agitation. It was a relief to clear the air, but there was more to discuss. I brought up Dad's heartfelt request to spend his remaining days with us. James's reaction was unexpectedly harsh. He refused, citing Dad's wealth and our limited space, especially with the medical equipment Dad would need. His words were shocking, filled with resentment and misunderstanding about my father's intentions and our lifestyle. I was stunned by his insensitivity. It seemed James didn't understand the emotional weight of the situation. I had always been independent, not relying on my father's wealth. This was a matter of family and compassion, not finances. Overwhelmed and frustrated, I gathered my things and left for my parents' house. James's words echoed in my mind, revealing a side of him I hadn't seen before. His lack of empathy for my father's condition and his resentment towards my family's financial status was disheartening. I needed space to think and process everything. Arriving at my parents' home, I let myself in with my spare key and collapsed on the couch, exhausted by the day's emotional turmoil. The comfort of being in my childhood home offered some solace in a day filled with difficult revelations and decisions. The following day, after a tumultuous night, I managed to navigate through my workday before heading straight to the hospital. Wearing the same clothes as the day before, I was acutely aware of my disheveled appearance. My parents immediately noticed something was amiss, but I avoided any personal discussions until I had fully updated myself on my dad's condition. Once we covered all the updates about dad's health, the inevitable question about my appearance came up. Dad, with his characteristic humor, joked about my tornado-tossed look. I tried to deflect their concern, but they persisted especially after mentioning they had seen me on their home security footage, asleep on the couch. Reluctantly, I mentioned the disagreement with James, glossing over the details. Dad, sensing the tension, offered a selfless solution, suggesting he could stay at his place to avoid straining my marriage. But I was resolute. If James couldn't understand the importance of these final moments with my father, it raised serious doubts about the foundation of our marriage. I decided to have one final talk with James, if he remained unyielding, I was prepared to make a significant change. The gravity of the situation had made it clear. A marriage lacking empathy, especially in such a critical and emotional time, was not sustainable for me. Leaving the hospital, my decision was firm. My next conversation with James would be decisive. The situation with my dad, already traumatic, had brought deeper issues in my marriage to the surface, and I was ready to confront them head on. Struggling with the onset of depression and anxiety, I returned home to find James still at work. This alone time was my opportunity to freshen up and steal myself for the conversation ahead. I was hurt and disappointed that James, despite his earlier anxiety about my whereabouts, hadn't reached out after I left in a huff. His silence weighed heavily on me. Determined to not dwell on these thoughts, I focused on planning my discussion with James. I was ready to express my grievances but also prepared for the possibility of divorce. My best friend, a divorce attorney, could make the process less daunting, but the thought of it was still disheartening. As I waited for James, I decided to take the higher road and check on him. I called and texted several times, but received no response. Just as my worry peaked, James finally came home. He barely acknowledged me and headed straight for the shower. I waited in bed, hoping for a meaningful conversation. When he emerged, James tried to leave the room, but I stopped him, seeking closure. I initiated the talk, expressing how hurtful his words had been. James's defensive response did little to ease the tension. I revisited the topic of my dad staying with us. James was adamant in his refusal, not budging from his stance. Frustrated, I questioned his aversion to the idea, trying to understand his perspective. It was clear that this conversation was pivotal, not just for the issue at hand, but for the future of our relationship. The weight of the situation was palpable as I navigated through this difficult, potentially life-altering dialogue. Feeling deeply troubled, I confronted James about his reluctance to have my parents stay with us. His argument centered on our limited space, 
and his plans to convert the spare bedroom into an office. I countered, highlighting that this conversion could wait, especially given the dire circumstances. The conversation quickly spiraled into a deeper issue, James's resentment towards my father for not financially assisting us. I reminded James that it was my decision to not accept financial help from my dad, a choice I made independently. James expressed his frustration about working hard, suggesting that financial help from my dad could have eased our burden. I was taken aback by his lack of understanding and teamwork, feeling that he failed to appreciate my equal contribution to our household. The discussion reached a dead end with James adamantly refusing to have my parents over. I resolved to stay with my family during my dad's final months, a decision James seemed indifferent to. That night, alone in our bedroom, I grappled with the realization that the man I married had become unrecognizable, his insensitivity pushing me to a breaking point. Tears filled my night as I mourned the state of our relationship. The next morning, I took a day off work and began packing my belongings. At the hospital, I explained everything to my parents. They were upset with James but supportive of my decision. We completed the necessary paperwork to bring Dad home, arranging his safe transport. Dad, feeling responsible for the rift in my marriage, apologized. I reassured him that the fault lay with James, not him. In between caring for Dad, I reached out to my best friend, a lawyer, to initiate divorce proceedings. James's lack of effort to reach out or understand the situation only solidified my decision. This difficult period was a turning point, marking the end of one chapter of my life and the uncertain beginning of another. During the rare times James reached out, our conversations were brief and lacked depth. He would ask about my dad and me, but his disinterest was evident whenever I mentioned dad was doing well. The next one months were a precious time, dedicated to my dad. I was grateful to my boss for allowing me to work half days, giving me more time with my family. Those days were filled with laughter, reminiscing, board games, and shared TV shows. Seeing dad's constant smile was a balm to the pain and uncertainty of my situation. His well-being was my top priority, overshadowing all other concerns. As Dad's final weeks approached, his health declined rapidly. It was heartbreaking to witness the loss of his vitality. Mom and I, united in our grief, spent nights holding each other, crying over the impending loss. And then, one night, Dad passed away peacefully in his sleep. The sorrow was immense, especially for Mom. I took on the responsibility of planning the funeral and notifying Dad's friends and colleagues. I also knew I had to inform James in person. My aunt arrived to support Mom, giving me the chance to visit my home to talk to James. Before going, I picked up the divorce papers. I wanted to address everything concurrently, seeking closure on all fronts after Dad's funeral. Finding James at home, absorbed in TV, his surprise at seeing me was evident. I informed him of Dad's passing, to which he offered a tepid apology. His reaction confirmed his insensitivity, especially when he dismissed my feelings about Dad's last request. His callousness solidified my decision to end our marriage. This encounter, under the shadow of my father's death, was a stark reminder of the emotional chasm between us, marking the end of our shared path. In the midst of my deep grief, James's reaction to my father's passing was shockingly insensitive. His focus immediately shifted to the inheritance Dad had left me, speculated to be around $8 million. James's blatant interest in the money, rather than supporting me through my loss, was the final straw. I informed him of my decision to divorce, which he protested, seeing it as a threat to the comfortable life he anticipated. I was resolute, not swayed by his pleas. Leaving him with the divorce papers, I returned to my mother's house, visibly upset and angry. Mom, sensing my distress, offered comfort but I chose to discuss the details after the funeral. The funeral was a deeply emotional event, reflecting the love and respect many held for my dad. It was heartwarming to reconnect with family and friends, their support a small solace in our grief. In the following two months, while dealing with the loss, I found myself entangled in a legal battle. James contested the divorce, greedily eyeing my inheritance. Fortunately, dad's will be clear and legally robust, leaving the inheritance solely to me. James's efforts were in vain, and he ended up having to sell his share of our house to me, unable to afford the mortgage on his own. I took over the house, planning to renovate and rent it out. Meanwhile, Mom and I, supporting each other, began to heal and find joy again. Living together, we found strength in our shared experiences and memories of Dad. 
Five months have passed since these tumultuous events. Life is gradually looking brighter. The inheritance has been a help, but I'm determined to be self-reliant, valuing the hard work that defines me. This year has been a whirlwind of change and emotion, and I'm curious and hopeful about what the future holds.